Hey guys, Sky here, and I'm with Minecraft Universe, and today we are playing Epic Jump Map Buddy Edition. It used to be called Sky Does Minecraft. You would play with blocks and do stupid videos for little kids. <laughs> Sky Does Minecraft, you guys probably know who he is. He is like one of the biggest Minecraft YouTubers, over 12 million subscribers. It's so easy to come online and have this persona and everything and have people love you and be a completely different person behind the scenes. point or another, we've all enjoyed Minecraft. Literally everyone's saying, Bestie, what are you doing? I don't know. Dude, did they, was that there already? A sign? Yeah. I gotta get a closer look at this fucking thing. <laughs> I can't think of a game that's just as relevant now as it was 10 years ago when I first found out about it. Commonly ranked among the top five most popular video games of all time, it's only natural for Minecraft to be one of the dominant subgenres in online gaming content. The simplistic, relaxed nature of Minecraft often allows the gameplay to take a back seat, giving the personalities of those playing it a chance to shine through. Dude, I had a bagel. I order a bagel with, 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 with bacon. bacon, it was bacon, cream cheese, and an egg. Which is necessary for creators looking to build a dedicated fan base. And it gets to me, the egg doesn't look like egg, the bacon doesn't look like bacon, and I shoved it in my mouth like a fat fuck anyways, and then I started vomiting. In recent years, one of the easiest ways to keep your enormous audience engaged is just with casual games of Minecraft with friends. Take Dream for instance. Getting fans in the door by cheating on viral speedruns, and keeping them coming back for more with the Dream SMP, allowing viewers to feel a part of the action themselves. When he isn't arguing with Twitter accounts called BallsLover32, of course. For me, one of the main reasons I even cared about Minecraft was thanks to Tobuskis. If it weren't for his Let's Plays being so fun and endearing, I may never have played Minecraft to begin with. I also may never have bought this shirt, but that's something we won't talk about. The point is, I looked up to him. A lot. I was 13, and he was one of the only YouTubers I watched. So you can imagine how crushed I felt during his subsequent fall from grace. Tobuscus' fate serves as a cruel reminder that idolizing creators, particularly Minecrafters for some reason, is a dangerous game to play. Because the happy, clean image shown to their millions of young, child fans haven't always turned out to be the exact individual behind the mask. Get it. I think Dream is clean, for the most part. Now, I'm talking about someone with a much more extensive and cooperated track record of alleged wrongdoings. Accusations that bring into question the legacy of one of the biggest names in Minecraft history, Sky Does Minecraft. I don't think Wait, I'm going Minecraft. up there. Wait. Wait. Is that Sky Does Minecraft? Minecraft, Minecraft, constantly Minecraft. Is that all Sky time. Does Minecraft? Minecraft? No, Minecraft that's that is time. actually Sky Does Minecraft. That is literally oh, Minecraft. Minecraft all the time, Minecraft 420 Blaze all the time, Welcome. Minecraft. But you know what most Minecraft fans can't do? Drink. Unlike the majority of you guys who are over the legal drinking age to who might have to recommend Bright Cellars. The monthly membership wine program that uses a simple seven question quiz to pair you with extravagant wines based on your own individual tastes. Curated to your palate, Bright Cellars focuses on finding unique hidden gems from small vineyards located all over the world World. With hundreds of exclusive brands, you'll be able to try new wines you've never tasted before. Each box coming with a wine education card for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes, suggested pairing, best serving temperatures, and origins. After taking the quiz myself, I was paired with Silverscape, Cactus Park, and main character because, well, that's obviously what I am. So why waste any time? Find your personalized matches by clicking the link in the description box below or go to brightsellers.com slash jobbery to get 50% off your first six bottle box today. That's right, you can get your first box for just $55, including shipping when you visit brightsellers.com slash jaubrey. Massive thanks again to the wonderful folks over at Bright Cellars for sponsoring this video. And of course, drink responsibly. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Sky Does Minecraft. All right, I've been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of people telling me Hey Sky, you should uh you should do Minecraft. So I did, I bought it, and um 
Let's play. Sky Does Minecraft, currently known on YouTube as Sky Does Everything, is a non-binary online gaming personality and former animator who once boasted over 12 million subscribers at the peak of their career towards the late 2010s. Once the most subscribed Minecraft channel and the second most subscribed gaming channel on all of YouTube, since 2017, Sky has seen a net loss of about 800,000 of those subs over the course of a massive rebrand and a wave of severe abuse and neglect allegations that have tainted the reputation of the once family-friendly Minecraft entertainer. Born on January 17, 1993, Adam Dahlberg experienced a rocky adolescence growing up in Washington State, with both parents out of the picture and an adopted mother hooked on Oxycontin when Adam was still very young. On top of issues at home, Adam weighed around 300 pounds, was routinely picked on at school, and shunned for many social circles as stated in interviews. You know, I was like a really fat kid in the back of the class that nobody would talk to because I looked weird. Because mm -hmm. there was so much crazy going on in my, uh, my home life, I wound up uh, taking to the internet. With a lack of parental support combined with being a social outcast, Adam was drawn further into the internet, passing time with games of Minesweeper and Pinball, but it wasn't long until Adam became notably obsessed with RuneScape at age 9. This was also around the time Adam became interested in smoking marijuana, and by 14, was shipped off to a Christian getaway camp, and subsequently stopped smoking for a bit. According to Adam, we'd never... Took over my life or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just one of those things where I was just like, yeah, I smoke. I know a lot of people where it's really taken over their life. Yeah, I mean, dabs, dude. Like, dabs <laughs> oh, that is crazy, too. That's <laughs> dabs, a scene right there. Dabs can get intense, man. At some point, though, Adam got back into substances as a means to treat depression. I'm not exactly sure when, but it happened. In the meantime, as Adam became more enthralled in the lore of RuneScape, they began to realize just how extensive the community was over on YouTube, a website that had just launched the previous year in 2005. This is where Adam finally found a creative outlet, starting a channel dedicated to RuneScape by the name of Jin the Demon that garnered around 11,000 subscribers before finally launching the renowned Sky Does Minecraft in 2011. Uh, 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 oh, uh, oh, oh, there's a lot of them. Okay. Uh, see you next episode. Peace. But even then, it would take about six to eight months before Adam saw any sort of traction, as many large Minecraft creators weren't totally willing to help out such a smaller channel without them first having a bit of clout. But Adam saw a gap in the market. See, 10 years ago, the most popular Minecraft videos were typically mod showcases, but none of the massive creators who dominated the genre had really delved much into the comedy aspect of things, so Adam figured why not make a mod showcase that actually made people laugh, and once that was in, Implemented the rest was history. Oh, oh god, I'm gonna swim up for oh, what? Ah! Oh, bears. No, 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 no. Whoa, dude, pay attention to me. Shut up, Squid. No, I'm supposed to be your friend. Stop it. Wait, ow. Oh, you dick. Minecraft mod showcase Slenderman, Minecraft explosives mod, Minecraft derpy squid mod. Just like that, Adam began raking in tens of millions of views on the regular. You're probably wondering, Sky, haven't you done this mod before? Well, actually, I have, but um, back when I did it, there was uh, only like really small features, and for Wanted Weekend, people actually voted this in the top four most wanted, you know, um, mod showcases to do. This was 2012. Minecraft was super popular. Creepy pastas were super popular. Why not combine them for a video that gets five million views? Then why the hell not make a sequel that gets seven million views? Slendy, I swear to God, I swear to God, stay back. Yeah, I didn't even want to be your friend anyway. I mean, Adam knew what they were doing. Minecraft Zombie Apocalypse, 2 million views. More Zombies, 4 million views. Mutant Zombies, 12 million views. This channel hadn't even been around for longer than a year, and it was already seeing views in the 8-figure range. By January 2013, Adam would achieve 1 million subscribers. The first of many milestones, as Adam would hit an impressive 10 million subs only about a year and a half later, garnering billions of views across the entire channel. Pretty much the definition of overnight success. Not totally unheard of though, with Minecraft channel seeing rapid growth all the way up to today, the difference was Adam was the first to ever do it. Moreover, this was at a time when interest in the game had never been higher, so naturally Adam and friends were quick to capitalize on such a golden opportunity. And guess what we are? What are you Founded 
founded in February 2012, Team Craft was a gaming collective consisting of among the biggest movers and shakers in all of Minecraft. First conceived by now former member Deadlocks, the idea for a Minecraft group first came to fruition over a Skype call, with the goal being to combine the audiences of huge channels and build an empire of fans from across multiple fan bases. Hey, hey them! But I, I really, really want your uh, your sweater. Is that a sweater? That's a shirt, isn't it? The earliest recruits consisted of Minecraft Universe, the Beijing Canadian, Cedo Sorcerer, Sundy, Husky Mudkipper. These fucking names, man. Kermit plays Minecraft. But perhaps the most notable member being Adam, who was actually hesitant to join at first, but eventually caved. This was, of course, among several other names who would all come and go as time progressed. It's honestly hard to keep up with the roster at a certain point. The important thing to know is that Team Crafted came with a lot of people and a lot of drama. Almost a comical amount, I have to say, after researching all of this. By 2013, a good handful of members had already left, including Adam's actual ex-fiance, Dawn, who deleted her entire social media presence once the couple called it quits in June of that year. The group was kind of falling apart. They needed to do something drastic to stay afloat and keep a healthy stream of content flowing. So they bought a mansion. Moving to Encino, California with the aim of working, vlogging, and living together under one roof, accidentally becoming one of the very first content houses. And yes, before you ask, that is Post Malone. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Post Malone once made content with Sky Does Minecraft and was kind of sort of an honorary member of Team Crafted for a bit. And this ain't Seems like a pretty talented guy. <laughs> Maybe he'll make it one day. Yeah, we uh, we worked really hard on these skits, and we hope you guys really really enjoy them. Uh, we had a lot of fun filming them. And, um... Unfortunately, after hitting their stride in 2014, Team Crafted was a short-lived venture. With feuds erupting all the time between members, Cedo Sorcerer even went public in saying he had been kicked from the group with no explanation before their move to California, directly pinning the blame on Beige and Canadian. This caused a rift between everyone in the community as, according to Cedo, Deadlocks was the only member to fight for his involvement in the group. Adam eventually took to their now-defunct Tumblr page to admit their goal was to always push their content away from strictly Minecraft and more towards live skits, vlogs, and music videos because Cito wasn't comfortable with having his name, face, and location plastered all over the internet, he was cut from the group that August. Cito went on to reject further invitations from the collective to record but eventually accepted Adam's apology and clarified with fans he was back on good terms with the team after the fact. It wasn't until Adam inexplicably left Team Crafted in March of 2014 that more rumors would begin cropping up. With little to no explanation behind the decision, fans at the time ruled Adam must have been fed up with the recent commercialization of the team by their manager Matt Michelson, a theory later confirmed by Adam's ex-wife on Ask FM. Deadlocks left the very same day along with an animator by the name of Blue Monkey. Over the rest of that month, about four other members would leave Team Crafted for mostly unexplained reasons. To this day, the true explanation for the fall of Team Crafted Crafted is still up for debate, with some blaming Adam for leaving out of nowhere, and others pointing fingers at Beijing Canadian, who is said to have been responsible for allowing a manager to commodify the group of what was once just a bunch of friends having fun. Still, the infighting wasn't about to stop just because the group ended. As fans noticed, Adam and Mitch, Beijing Canadian, had stopped recording together all at once. In fact, the link to Mitch's channel had mystifyingly vanished from every single one of Adam's videos he was in. After recalling an early Twitter spat between the two, fans turned to a mutual friend of the pair who stated they just realized that they wanted different things, and they decided to not record or be friends anymore. It's very common for people to drift apart due to different wants. To this day, fans have never been able to know exactly what happened, and who's to blame, if anybody. According to one article, there is still unresolved drama, especially on Sky's side of things. It seems like we won't get the answers to the questions we've been asking for years for now.
But I mean, you have your own fucking Minecraft toys. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten a paycheck for those for like months. By the mid 2010s, Adam had gotten their own action figure, featured in a Lady Gaga music video, and achieved a fraction of the world's population in total view count. A 23 year old multi millionaire rivaling PewDiePie for the biggest independent gaming creator on the site, Adam aspired to branch out for making traditional Minecraft content in a bedroom at home. Instead, Adam wanted an office, a team of employees that could pump out content and mold a massive brand to later be sold for a large sum of money. It's why Adam founded Sky Media, serving as CEO of a company that seemingly aimed to kickstart the careers of other small YouTubers. Adam got a hold of 8,000 square feet of office space located out of Bellevue, Washington, with over 14 total employees on the payroll by 2016. According to an article from around that time, the staff was made up of editors, videographers, IT specialists, production coordinators, and on-camera talent whose average age was around 22. They didn't offer health benefits or a 401k on account of being a startup, according to Adam. We are looking to put that together by the end of the year. I want to make sure my people are taken care of. Can you remember that line? Because it certainly won't age the finest, to say the absolute least. At one point, though, Sky Media oversaw eight channels with around four to five uploads per day, with each one typically being between 45 minutes to an hour in length. Employees at Sky Media would spend their days in the studio, hours on end, recording voiceovers for characters like Bacon Man and Hash Brown Hank. Well, I'm over here, Bacon where's, Man. Where's Bacon Bacon Hash Mom. Brown Hank. Ha! <laughs> if I don't see 30,000 likes, I will cry. All right? No, don't cry, Bacon I'm, Man. Don't cry. Right. Yeah, Bacon Man, it's, it's extremely hard. No, don't cry. I the mean, cars aren't necessary, Bacon Man. I got it. Needless to say, they had their work cut out for him. Eventually, a channel now called Office Antics was launched, where several employees of Sky Media would post challenges, improv comedy, gaming, and try not to laugh videos, not unlike what Smosh used to do. All right, hey guys, Sky here, and it's the first episode ever of Real Life Do Not Laugh. You can't can't tell my name's not on the scoreboard. It's because it's going to be a battle to the death between all of these guys is gonna be crazy. And active currently is Sky Media really is no more. Something we'll delve further into a little later. Throughout 2016, while working at the offices, Adam quietly started to lose that passion for Minecraft on account of a couple reasons. For one, the community was no longer what it used to be. The genre was becoming increasingly saturated with more Let's Players, and Adam found it hard to keep up with the child-friendly zeitgeist. And I've noticed that with my commentaries recently, that it's been really, really hard to do that because I'm constantly thinking of censoring myself. I'm always constantly thinking of uh, what word I can replace another word with so that it doesn't, so that I don't swear. Um, and I've just noticed that it's really hard to be myself on this channel. Adam can either continue wearing a mask for the internet or throw all caution to the wind and go down a completely different path. One that might not be as profitable long term. On top of that, despite having regular uploads with the help of Sky Media, Adam's sub count was dwindling. Unsure what the direction of where to take the channel, and after growing apathetic towards the new Minecraft community, Adam began branching into music, as being able to pour such strong emotions into song filled the hole that was once occupied by gaming. But rather than just being a side hustle, Adam was determined to make a name in music, ditching the Skydas Minecraft label entirely and embracing a brand new persona, Net Nobody. Turning to a life of music, Adam transformed into the artist formerly known as Sky Does Minecraft by adopting the alias Net Nobody, releasing a handful of lyric videos and songs not too dissimilar from what other YouTubers turned musicians have made in the past. There really wasn't anything too distinctive regarding Adam's new hobby, at least not until KSI got involved. Coming to remind you what you said to me, KSI. Don't be salty now. Maybe if you stop trying to be a want to be post Malone and went back to playing with blocks, you'd be happy again. What is it going to be like when you get absolutely destroyed by a retired Minecraft YouTuber? <laughs> Don't disappoint me. The world-renowned rapper, boxer, and more recently a sports drink entrepreneur was forced into a Twitter dispute after the Minecrafter unleashed a series of tweets roasting JJ for being a bad artist, threatening to drop better bars than him on a diss track of their own entitled Diss Track Ed. The first of two singles Adam would use to ambush KSI that August. KSI wasted no time addressing the madness, going on to respond to Adam's disses on his own main channel in front of 17 million people. <laughs> 
acting like you hard now I'ma pull that mask down I'ma take that gold crown That you wearing like a clown Boy, you ain't no artist Come in Wait, 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 wait. I'ma pull Wait I'ma pull Wait, what? Your subtitles are false <laughs> I'ma pull that mask down. I'ma pull, take that gold crown. What, what? <laughs> Make up your fucking mind. What clown wears a crown? I don't, what, what's the, ah! Did you just think what rhymes with crown? Clown, ugh. It. <laughs> Threatening to ruin Adam's career, Kansai began preparing a counter diss track, hyping the beef on Twitter by posting, I, I, I can't even show you. <laughs> After Adam planted a leak of their own upcoming track only a few days later, Deji and JJ reacted to it in the video titled, Ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha, you get it, it's a very abstract title. Oh, oh. what? No, oh, what is this? Yeah. How is this? How is this a response? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm about to give him the diss track of his life, and he's just there going. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh. This is where Adam vowed to drop their counter counter diss track on KSI the very same day as him, which probably wasn't the best idea in hindsight, seeing that KSI went to extreme lengths to make sure Adam was in fact ruined, making the beef especially personal by firing off a lethal set of bars alluding to Adam being an abuser, a wife beater, and a deadbeat father, even flying out the mother of Adam's son as the final nail in the coffin. Even after all these years, I gotta admit, KSI kinda took the fucking W. <laughs> this only devolved into Adam having an emotionally charged breakdown in front of millions of people shortly after, proving this was more than just music. Yeah, I shit the fucking bed once. Like, well, twice, actually. I did it again in, in this new relationship. It was awkward. But, like, I'm not gonna let this shit happen to me, because if I don't disprove this, then I'm leaving a fucked up legacy for my son! And I'm not gonna let that shit happen! I did so much for her! I paid her through beauty school. I just wanted her to succeed in life. Even when she was at her lowest, before she met me, she was like fucking underweight. She was, she didn't know what the fuck she was doing with her life. And all I wanted for her was to find her goddamn purpose. Adam was finally facing what would become the first of many damning allegations against their character. Although it wasn't taken too seriously and didn't last long, because after a few more Twitter exchanges and a subtle sneak diss on a future KSI track, the two seemed to be on pretty good terms by 2020. Regardless of how brutal KSI's language was, the situation only served to amplify Adam's music career and revived a brand that had been faltering for the past couple of years. Sure, it may have been in a negative light, but Adam was finally being talked about again. And at the time, that's all that really mattered. And I appreciate everybody sticking along with me during my, I guess, path to self-discovery. I know that it's no secret anymore that me and Elisa have separated. And, you know, along with that, we have a kid. So there's a lot of things happening on the personal end of the spectrum that makes things a little bit difficult and, you know, makes things a lot harder for me. Adam's life had changed drastically between 2014 and 2017. After breaking up with the mother of their child, Elisa, in January, the two would be involved in a series of public spats regarding what seemed like personal relationship issues, with Adam making very serious allegations against Elisa, who at the time urged the public to take Adam's mental state into consideration, chalking Adam's behavior up to a manic episode and claiming they needed help. Despite everything, the couple would get back together by March of 2017. Only for a short period of time though, as it wouldn't take long for Adam to go on yet another Twitter rampage in June, publicly accusing Elisa of chronic cheating, mental and physical abuse. This would later be recontextualized by Elisa herself in 2022, claiming the reason behind her arrest was because she had finally retaliated against Adam abusing her. According to her, after Adam cornered her and screamed in her face that they would do everything to make sure the court saw her as an unfit mother, she punched Adam in the neck and was taken into custody shortly after. When the cops showed up, Elisa was terrified that telling the truth would cause Adam to lose their job, and thus would leave no one fit to take care of Mason, their son. And as a result, she spent her son's first Easter in jail, all because Adam refused to send bail money. For five whole days, Elisa sat alone in a jail cell, all for defending herself against Adam's alleged reprehensible behavior. Over the coming years, 
Adam was able to use this as leverage over Elisa, even attempting to dox her over the incident, which Adam basically already did back in 2017 with their ex-fiance, Dawn, encouraging fans to look up their residents in an attempt to somehow prove innocent. If you want, uh, if you want to see if there's any, like, merit to the claims with, um, with, uh, uh, Dawn, if, like, I was abusive or anything, uh, the house that I lived at was, uh, Um, go ahead and check my name on that, see if there's any arrest records, or go ahead and see if there's any, um, I guess, proof that, uh, there was anything really crazy that happened, um, you know, just do the, do the information yourself, find it yourself. I don't want to get too far into the new wave of allegations, though, before first setting the stage for Adam's alleged behavior. Because the truth is, those in Adam's life have been speaking out for years without being taken seriously. My case in point, your pal Ross. Like, at the end of the day, dude, your perspective is your perspective, and my perspective is my perspective. My receipts can say different things, your receipts can say different things. Your pal Ross, formerly known as House Owner, is a gaming YouTuber who once worked at Sky Media alongside roommates Max, MythZen, and a Tim.TV, who all ended up quitting around the same time in May 2016. Now, fast forward to a video Adam published on April 2nd, 2020, reacting to old content, in which Adam made some vague allusions to a falling out with Ross over Sky Media. You know, all of the- I, I get so many comments every f***ing video. When are you gonna do s*** with Ross again? Of course. <laughs> Listen, of course. I- I don't know. Uh, Ross is the horse. <laughs> I just, I, I like give you guys life advice as I- We had a pretty bad falling out over Sky Media. I don't even actually remember, but apparently it was pretty bad to him. It's just drama. I'm already over it. Whenever he's down to move past it, he's down to move past it. But, you know, I'm, I'm over it. I've, uh, I, I've, I've discovered and realized that it's just really not worth it and I'm, I'm just being open about it. You know, if you ever watch this video, dude, like, why don't we just settle this over a game of Smash Bros? Eventually, these strange and unprovoked comments got back around to Ross, who was compelled to make this post to YouTube and Twitter, in which he aimed to provide further context for the aforementioned falling out. The truth was, Ross left Sky Media because he no longer had creative control over the channel he initially sold to Adam to become a part of Sky Media. When he left, he was given the choice to either buy the channel back from Adam or start fresh with an entirely new persona. Because Ross didn't agree on the asking price, he chose the latter, and thus the Your Pal Ross name was born. Afterwards, he claims, the two struggled to maintain a friendship, since it still sucked having to give up the channel he had created as a kid. Seeing all the new changes made to House Owner over the years was kind of tough. One day, Adam became weirdly antagonizing towards Ross over a tweet made by his roommate Tim, which had to do with PewDiePie's recent content feeling burnt out, which basically devolved into an all-out argument that his other roommate, Max, was manipulating Ross into being against Adam. Once Max found out about Adam's assertions that he was being manipulative, he broke down and blocked the CEO along with Ross, who wanted nothing to do with Adam from that point on. Since then, Ross has been at the receiving end of hate from Adam's community, both at their own will and at the word of Adam, even years after the dispute occurred. Additionally, Ross claimed Adam had threatened to bleed him dry in court if he ever spoke out about their time together, a phrase we'll all start to know and love as this video progresses. Regardless, Ross's statement was met with vitriol and doubt from fans, as well as total retaliation from Adam personally, who blasted Ross on Twitter over the coming days. Writing Ross's testimony off as his own personal perspective, accusing Ross of doing this because the Sky Does Everything channel is finally doing well again, pretty hilarious because he wouldn't be doing this if Adam had just kept their damn mouth shut. Even toning the hashtag drama free nobody, as Adam kept reiterating a desire to move away from drama, while actively in instigating said drama on their 11 million sub channel. After becoming increasingly more hostile, threatening to delete old collabs and confusing onlookers who didn't know the full situation, Adam was eventually pushed to release their own long-winded side of the story, of which Ross would be quick to pick apart and debunk almost immediately, revealing Adam had actually lied about the purchasing price for Ross's channel, which was only $4,000 as opposed to Adam's previously stated five-figure deal, along with Adam failing to follow through on the promise that they'd be getting a sales percentage if they ever sold the company. This was never written down in any contracts, and Adam's manager later clarified there would be no sales
sales percentage as told by Adam. Additionally, Ross stated that his friend Max only left the company after being presented with a talent contract he did not agree with. Max was told he would be talent by the end of the year he joined, which never happened. Max couldn't even upload videos while waiting because Adam didn't want him growing without first being able to purchase the channel, according to Ross. Despite everything, he concludes the document by thanking Adam for everything they've done to help his career. Well, after this was posted, Adam lost it. Absolutely berating Ross in a video published to millions of people on Twitter, Adam barely addresses any of the claims Ross made and instead resorts to petty grandstanding. The fact that you're harping on three-year-old drama makes me think that you really have nothing going on for you right now and you're, you're hyper-focused on blaming me for your, your non-success on your pal Ross. At the end of the day, you're probably just making enough money to pay rent and that's unfortunate considering you went from being able to buy a Jaguar to probably having to sell it. Calling him broke and that Ross would be nothing without Adam and Sky Media. I don't give a shit. Like at, at the end of the day, like dude, my whole job was to try and make you successful. And here you are on a platform that I helped you create trying to knock me. I don't give a shit what you have to say because your entire everything was something that I created. Somehow Adam's 12 year old fan base largely took a stance against Ross, calling him an ungrateful employee and even getting confused as to why he'd want to drudge up old drama in the first place. Even though, once again, he didn't. He was only defending himself against comments made by Adam. If Adam wanted to move on so badly, I don't understand the effort to drag things out as long as possible. Which is something Adam came to realize a bit later, as evident by a much more tranquil third video release after the dust had settled. I've had time to think, I've talked to a couple people, and I'd like to open up with saying, I apologize for flying off the handle. I apologize for saying a lot of shit that didn't need to be said today. I apologize to Ross, to Max, to everybody involved to Nick, to Barney, to every Sky Media member who had to watch this fucking disaster unfold. I'm just hurt, man. Remember me for the Adam that helped you and did a lot for you, not the one that was, you know, suffering from a lot of mental shit and, ca and finally caving in under the pressure and losing his mind when he had a million things on his plate. Just remember Adam, that was good Adam, okay? Just, I don't wanna do this anymore, man. I fucking hate this and I really care about you. But man, you can fucking piss me off. By now, I'm sure you can probably rule that Adam's mental state isn't the best it's ever been. Posting such concerning content to a confused audience on Twitter didn't help to reassure anybody either. I'm Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick right now. I'm Pickle Rick right now. I'm Pickle Rick right now. Pickle Rick right now. Pickle. Pickle? A sad state of events oh. that wasn't about to get any better once a darker, more perturbing okay. side of Adam came to light in January of 2022. On January 23rd, the mother of Adam's second child, Elizabeth Lizbuggy, on Twitter, published a viral tweet with the caption, It's time everyone knows the truth. I'm tired of letting you get away with this. The police know, putting the evidence below. Garnering thousands of retweets and impressions, the scathing iCloud document linked in the tweet provided an insanely detailed, insanely dark look into the internal hell Liz had been subjected to for the past several years. Allegedly, I guess I have to say, so Adam doesn't bleed me dry and cool or whatever. This is also where I want to give a trigger warning since the content we're about to look at can be reasonably difficult for anyone to listen to, especially if you've been involved in a similar situation. So please feel free to skip this part of the video if you don't want to hear the details. I totally understand, it's not an easy read. Liz begins her 4,000 word testimony by clarifying some vital info has been omitted in the provided screenshots as means to protect her and her daughter's privacy. Firstly, addressing Adam directly, Liz writes, I'm gonna do my best to be the voice you have taken 
taken from so many. You hurt, you abuse, you manipulate, and you lie. You are a sick man. I spent months and months loving you with my entire being. I spent thousands of dollars just to come live with you. You made promises you didn't want to keep, but promises you made to manipulate my life so you could just be in control. You use your fame, your name, and your platform to hide the disgusting and disgraceful things that you claim not to do. You not only verbally abused and degraded me, the mother of your second child, you traumatized me and put me through things no one should ever have to experience. You hurt me for too long, and I'm tired of feeling afraid of you and what speaking up may bring. I had to tell people you weren't abusive because whenever I said you were, you would harass me and say horrible, horrible things. You were so unkind. I do not wish for anybody to have mental health struggles, nor do I wish for somebody, even you, to have such severe struggles. I wanted nothing but to love you and help you heal. You informed me you were bipolar and possibly on the spectrum, which was never a problem to me. That was never the case. What you hid from me is the dangerous human you were capable of being, the person you are overall. Side note, I'm gonna do my best to cover this document to its fullest without just reading it entirely verbatim. Because of the length, it's kind of hard to include everything here, but I have linked the document down below in the description, as well as an audio version for your convenience. Liz goes on to assert that she was in no way prepared emotionally or financially to raise a child, despite Adam's constant pleas to have one together. Saying stuff like, please, please, I want another kid, I have the money, I want another kid because Elisa keeps me from being the father I dream of, and much more. Even when she finally became pregnant, Adam barely reacted with a small smirk and an oh cool face, as if to say they had finally gotten what they wanted and expected all along. On top of neglecting the mother-to-be, Liz went on to say Adam was constantly on the phone, texting, being secretive, deleting conversations, as if there was something going on behind her back. After trying to force Liz to join a polycule with a friend, she reportedly found conversations of Adam cheating on her, before and after she moved in. Though Adam treated them as trophies and insisted the two get married because Liz was literally pregnant, even though she told Adam she wasn't ready for that either. Adam just didn't care about her needs or desires, she was merely another facet for Adam to control. Even trying to buy her own baby, quoting a time Adam said, if you don't want her, I'll just give you like a hundred grand or something. It's like Adam saw their own children as objects that could be bought and sold like commodities. As Liz goes on, she was even forced to order rings and propose to Adam herself so that they could boast about it on Twitter. In the words of Liz, she was heartbroken and her dreams of marriage were beyond crushed. The only reason she didn't leave was fear. She was afraid for her own safety and the well-being of her unborn child. Writing, you treated me and everybody as peasants and would use your popularity against us. Behavior we've already come to expect from Adam during the Ross situation. Liz continued, You stole money from companies just to buy drugs and never do the work. I had to pull thousands of dollars I needed for food and bills out of my ass just to pay back those individuals and pay bills with what was left. They were so kind about it. I was so scared. I wanted so badly to slip them a note saying I'm afraid. I felt so numb. I wanted to die. Wanting to take herself to the hospital just to have a clean place to sleep and be surrounded by safe, trustworthy people. Liz begged for time to sleep, time away from Adam who just didn't want to hear it even during more stable moments. Sleep deprivation just wasn't a big deal. Even for a pregnant woman, evidently, according to Adam. Complaining that she couldn't lift a 200 to 300 pound washing machine while she was pregnant, throwing a temper tantrum and verbally berating her. You're not enough and you can't do anything right. I was never allowed to stand up for myself. If I had an anxiety attack, you would call me a baby and degrade me. Yet when you would get emotional, you expect everyone to bow down at your feet and feed you love and support on a gold platter. You pressured our friends into doing drugs and would degrade them if they didn't want to. So many people spent so much money and time helping you when you needed help, yet you treated everyone so poorly when you didn't get what you want, as Liz continued. Asking Adam not to smoke in the house, to which the response was, it's my house, even if it put the baby in danger. As for Adam's other son, Mason, Liz claims she spent more time with the boy in three months than Adam did in a year. And it wasn't even her kid? Only post father picks when it was convenient to convince fans Adam was a good dad. The allegations somehow managed to take an even darker turn when Liz asserts Adam had not only sexually assaulted and harassed multiple girls in the past, but even paid them off with hundreds of thousands of dollars just to protect your perfect little image. You paid a girl to keep quiet years ago because you almost got her pregnant and you didn't care. You sent news to young girls. You never asked for ages because you never cared. Additionally, spreading rumors about Elisa whenever she would try to defend herself against Adam's cheating. As well as spreading rumors about Post Malone, Adam's former friend all the way back from the Team Crafted days, claiming Adam would spread rumors of Post Malone, saying awful things about his character, which is odd because last I checked, he was even checking in on you and extremely kind, was trying to help you out even. From abusing drugs, you would act possessed and
and do a bunch of spiritual talk. I thought you were just deep into spirituality, but that was the drugs. Because your psychiatrist a few years ago told you that even weed is dangerous and can put you into psychosis. Elisa tried so much to help you. All your girlfriends did. You didn't care. Liz goes on to claim that Adam had bizarrely cheated on her with an AI, waking people up in the middle of the night to tell people about it. By February, she claims Adam had gotten belligerent, meaner, stopped eating and sleeping normally, and how movies can't even depict how scary things would get. According to Liz's testimony, Adam would break things, throw objects, rip stuff off the walls, and scream at ants. Started calling her dog Albert Elon Musk? Adam locked him in a kennel, forced the animal to eat candy, and drink Gatorade with photo evidence too. Letting him outside in the cold where he almost literally froze to death, according to Liz, dragging the dog by its throat and throwing him in a kennel surrounded by all mirrors. Adam would jump in and out of windows, scattering food across the walls and floors of their house. Even when Adam was stable, as outlined in her testimony, Adam would still treat people horribly, no matter if they were trying to help or not. Weirdly and cruelly clogging the drains of their house and forcing a pregnant Liz to waddle down the street to use the restroom. Tears on my face and my hair a mess because he wouldn't let me shower. You'd constantly tell me how I'm going to be a bad mother because I couldn't do something fast enough or to your standards. You would scream at me to leave and when I tried you would grab me and speaking nonsense. I tried so desperately to bring you back to baseline. I tried so hard. You'd have stable moments and still would not care what you were doing. At another point, she continues, you cut a gash into your knuckle. You came up to me and I continuously tried to clean it and bandage it while our friends tried to keep you calm. You came up to me with the bandages off and started putting the blood on my face and on my arms. I was horrified. You started painting on the walls with your blood. You put blood marks on our lizard tanks and our bathroom walls as well as the mirrors. You elbowed my belly several times. I was just trying to love you. I continuously spoke calmly and did everything I could. After getting the wrist checked out at the hospital, she claims Adam got violent, saying, I came up to you and you started screaming and kicked your feet into my belly and started shoving me away, screaming awful things. I thought I was going to miscarry, it hurt so bad. I stood up and the social worker hugged me while I bawled my eyes out. Security took over again. They made sure I was okay and had me leave. The nurses called me to make sure I was okay and I'll never forget them. You were hospitalized for a week. Elisa never gave up on helping me, even if it was just checking in. She is not the bad guy you so claimed her to be. Upon leaving the hospital, Adam unfortunately got worse. You became more violent. You were medicated, then stopped taking them when you felt stable because you've always enjoyed feeling powerful. You said so yourself. The second you saw flashing lights, you acted completely fine and tried telling them I was crazy. They didn't take you away. I'd tell you I felt sick and was worried about the baby and you'd laugh it off. Fighting one instance in particular where Adam began squeezing her until it hurt, shouting nonsense in her ear and screamed at her to break her Totoro bong piece, which was a gift. You were threatening to kill people, our roommate, our friends. You for some reason kept bringing up Ant Venom and how badly you wanted to kill him. You were fully in psychosis at this point, reportedly keeping dozens of voice recordings of all of this until Adam made her delete everything. The police were informed as Adam had also done this to Elisa too. You threatened to end your life many times if I didn't listen to you or do what you want. Even when you were stable, you would make these threats. One night before the police came, you got in my face with a knife before they arrived, screaming how you wanted to kill our roommate, then went and slashed his mattress, providing the police reports with further details on these incidents, as well as photos of the mattress itself. On top of blaming Liz for her ex-boyfriend's suicide in 2016, yanking her out of bed by her arm, Adam put the couple about $7,000 in debt after blowing through all of the remaining money on candy, drugs, and things a pregnant mother just can't eat. Finally, after a desperate call to her father, Liz's family drove down from Colorado to save her from such a hellish lifestyle inflicted by Adam, claiming her child would be dead if they were still living together. Even after blocking Adam on everything, she was still harassed by fans of Net Nobody who had twisted the situation so much that Liz was made out to be some kind of villain to those who never knew the real story. For the longest time, Liz was afraid to publish this document, not just because of all the horribly rude DMs she would get, but also the nice ones from fans who she did not want to upset by sharing the real side of their childhood hero. I know I'll get hate again, but you know what you're doing and always have. You never care unless it fires back in your face. I want you to get better. I want you to heal, but I don't want you hurting anyone else. In addition to her testimony, Liz was sure to include piles of evidence and receipts to back up her many claims, of which the police themselves had provided her, including a video taken by Adam, reportedly begging Liz for her last $200 she intended to spend on food, whereas Adam only wanted it for candy 
candy and drugs. Not to mention screenshots of Adam threatening suicide on Twitter, all for the purpose of making people look and feel bad. Providing photos of the candy Adam would live off, the small closet Adam wanted the baby to live and sleep in, the family's general living conditions, as well as a multitude of conversations that all seemed to prove exactly what Liz was saying when she wanted Adam to get help, only to not be taken seriously. Sending unrelated gifts and memes in the face of an emotionally distraught mother who just wanted the best for everyone involved. Voice memos and all. And right now. Oh. <laughs> I don't respect you. Jingly jingly. Jingly jingly. We will listen. Oh my gosh. I am just busting pistachios over and over and over again into my mouth. Oh, I'm focused. I'm trying to make our kid retarded. But this wouldn't be the last of the allegations to come out against Adam. Over the coming days and weeks, Liz's post would be followed up by an absolute flood of negative testimonies and experiences with Adam, varying in severity but all going to further corroborate her initial claims, some of which being former Sky Media employees, like Tim.TV, who took to Twitter with a thread writing, Working at Sky Media was the darkest period of my life that I've ever and probably will ever have. Eventually, the constant gaslighting and mental torture led me to nearly kill myself, but I decided to take my situation into my own hands and quit slash move away as far as I could. Since then, it's been a years long battle of trying to rebuild my self worth, and I'm not sure if I'll ever be back to 100%, but I'll keep trying. I don't feel like going into details, but one fun situation was when my mom had a heart attack and I wanted to go visit her to see if she was okay. This was one of the many times my loyalty was threatened and my job was held over my head because I had more videos to edit. It sounds absurd now, but with the fact that none of my relocation costs to Seattle were paid for by the company, that decision gets a little harder. To which Elisa even responded, I remember not seeing you for a while because of how busy you were with your work and your channel. When I finally did see you, I was shocked with how much weight you had lost from all the stress. No one seemed to give a shit either. Then as far as Jin Bop, Adam's friend and former associate exposed by the FBI for being a pedophile file that we just haven't had time to talk about. Tim commented, Jin used to be at the office as late as me and I was always wondering what he was up to. I checked and he was talking to fans on Skype which I thought was pretty weird because they were literal kids. I brought this up to management and was told to mind my own business and edit. Kind of puts this clip in a different light too, doesn't it? Uh, this is where I'm about to get controversial. Um, so get ready for this. This could either end my career or prove that I'm very, um, very, being very real with you guys, um, <clears throat> I don't think, I never thought Jin was that bad of a guy when I knew. And, uh, it's not my fault or, um, has anything to do with me what happened to him, so... <sighs> Sucks, bro. Tim and Ross's former roommate, Max, also came out with a twit longer of his own, explaining more of his time at Sky Media, in which he writes, When I was finally given a contract to sign and sell my channel, the offer was $5,000, a one-year non-complete, no social media presence for a year if I left, complete loss of any right to the name MythZan, and a bunch of other legal mumbo-jumbo that I did not agree with and was advised by several third parties not to sign. After over a year of waiting and being strung along, I decided to quit once I was handed such a shitty deal, which lines up exactly with Ross's testimony from years prior. Tim was vilified for no reason and treated horribly by everyone at the offices. Despite working 15 to 17 hour days, Max confirms Elise's assertions that Adam would only sometimes come into work as the CEO of the company. As it was revealed, the team kept two schedules, one for if Adam showed up and one for if Adam did not show up. Other past employees of Adam, Sub-Zero x being only 15 at the time, was editing six videos and six thumbnails a day, forfeiting school, sleep, and a social life all for Adam. Ross experiencing something similar. The working environment was disgusting and unprofessional. As Max says, he was shocked he stayed there as long as he did, though at the time, he felt brainwashed. In fact, the main reason he hadn't spoken out sooner was because Adam had always insisted that if he did, Adam would bleed him dry in court from legal fees and then he would have nothing. It didn't matter if Adam was in the wrong. 
From there, Elisa would continue to share more horror stories from her past with Adam, including the time she was six months pregnant. Adam took her car keys, phone, and laptop, leaving her alone in the house with no food until they came back around 11 p.m. She couldn't even walk anywhere for refuge on account of their lake house being miles away from any grocery store or restaurant. She wrote, Adam isolated me from my friends and family. I had no one to call and my father was in Mexico. I had no money of my own because Adam was supporting me because I had recently given birth to her son and I wasn't working, claiming Adam took financial control of everything. Also the reason she no longer has access to her YouTube channel. After speaking up on Twitter, she then received a bizarre message from Adam's mom, basically shaming her for telling her story. Even former Team Crafted members came forward to verify the things being said, with Deadlock stating, everyone was so scared of this guy, including myself. Creators spent years being intimidated. Adam lost 99% of their friends throughout their career. Now you guys know why. Scumbag. I'd never be friends with a guy like that. With Cito Sorcerer writing, half of me wants to put my experiences out, which explains the full story on why I left YouTube in 2014, but the other half just wants to avoid this drama because the anxiety is what caused the stomach turning pain I had in 2014, which made me leave. To which Gizzy Gaza responded, mood. But to me, I was too afraid to talk about the stuff that happened in 2013 to 2014. And yes, I have anxiety, but I'm not afraid anymore. Which is why they later posted their own Google Doc, which can be summarized as Adam convincing other creators and friends not to associate with Gizzy, which they obeyed as not to ruin their connections with Adam. Gizzy was ostracized from the community, and always had to walk on eggshells when dealing with Adam especially, understandably afraid of their power, much like everyone else at the time. Adam did have a tendency to unleash their supporters on whoever dared cross them, which is most likely why the famous films refused to name Adam in June of 2020, when he spoke out about their sexual harassment then. Grabbing his cheeks unprovoked and moving in for a kiss only to play it off as a joke? Amongst all the statements released against Adam, of which I will be including in the description of this video, one of the most anticipated was probably from Taylor and Venom, who Adam had previously threatened to murder on multiple occasions. Being another one of the most influential Minecrafters on the site, the two had sort of blown up together and shared many similarities content-wise. Starting by, I want to preface this by saying that ever since 2013, I've been kept just outside of arm's reach of Adam, so I was spared from much of what you may have heard from others. Explaining that despite a rocky friendship from 2012 to 2017, Adam would start to call Taylor in 2018, discussing radically delusional ideas that indicated a questionable mental space. Then, by 2019 and 2020, Taylor described Adam as being in some kind of psychotic state. With their home always being a wreck, Taylor was worried he might be the trigger for Adam to do something horrible. Ending the statement with the sentiment that Adam doesn't deserve forgiveness, although he'd like to see them still try to earn it. Hey guys, Scott here, and I'm with Ant Venom, and today, <laughs> and today we are playing Rumble Pit. It is a new map made by Podcrash, and it is really awesome. Basically, it's two players are pitted against each other in a fight to the death, 10 lives, no fancy equipment, just a sword, a bow, and your mime PvP the better PvP -er is. It's hard for me to sit here and read every last testament made against Adam in this one video alone, but that's certainly not to say one statement contains any less merit than another, which is why I'd encourage you to read all of them in their entirety down below below to really get as vivid a picture of Adam's track record of abuse as possible. I don't have to tell you that Adam is in a horrifically dark mental space and has brought unimaginable terror into the lives of so many loved ones over the past several years, because those most affected will tell you themselves. Watching the downfall of a childhood hero is never easy for those on the outside, but it's important to remember the individuals impacted the most and sympathize with the pain, stress, and trauma brought on by such a deeply troubled individual. Adam's reputation has been tainted forever, as those closest to them have finally put Skyda's Minecraft or Net Nobody on display in their truest, most sickening form. After so many years of twisting the narrative and hiding behind an audience of nostalgia-driven fans who don't know any better, some of which even being manipulated into sending Adam money as recent as late 2021, the internet is finally aware of the damage Adam has inflicted on an insane amount of people. My only hope is that everyone involved in this painful mess is one day able to achieve the peace and solace they all deserve to find. Keep on, keep on